Uh, doctors, you've all experienced those days um, where you're just running from the starting bell to the ending bell. Literally no time to go to the bathroom. Forget trying to grab something to eat. You're just going, going, going. And you look at the day sheet on the way out and you discover you didn't even cover the electric bill today. <laughs> Every dentist on the planet has had that experience. And, and you leave demoralized because you feel like a truck ran over you and, and yet you didn't produce anything. But your schedule was was what, Naren? Your schedule oh, was busy. Busy, yeah. Your schedule was busy. And then I bet every one of our listeners has had the opposite of that occur uh, where... Uh, you, you have a nice solid day, you know, just, just kind of nice, consistent, solid day. Uh, it doesn't feel particularly taxing. And at the end of the day, you look at the day sheet and said, holy cow, I, I've, I produced more today than I will do in three or four days sometimes. And, and you feel um, kind of tired, but like, like after a good workout kind of tired, you, know, you feel like I, an accomplished kind of tired, uh, very different. A uh, very big difference between being busy and being productive. Now let's put it in the context of reducing insurance. Some dentists are beginning to understand very intimately about this now because of what's happening with hygiene wages, hygiene wages. Right. I'm going to use California as an example. I know we have many listeners in California. Um, hygiene wages uh, in California have escalated uh, dramatically. Um, a uh, uh, average wage uh, for a hygienist, a high, an hourly wage for a hygienist in California is between seventy-five and eighty dollars an hour. Seventy-five and eighty an hour, and many dentists are are understanding that they're not getting enough reimbursement back from the from their PPO plan because of the PPO fees to even cover the hygienist wages. So recently, a a, a, a client, a new client, um, reached out to me, and he said, Gary, I've only recently understood how much I'm writing off to insurance. Thanks to your help. I've only recently understood what I'm writing off. I didn't know before. And now I know. And now I started looking at what my reimbursements are when I look at EOBs from PPO plans. And one particular Delta plan. Now, not all Delta plans are the same. You know, an employer can, can work with any insurance company to write the plan pretty much any way they want. And if they're willing to pay a higher premium, higher premiums for the employees, then they can design a better benefit plan. And if they're stingy and don't want to provide much in the way of benefits, then they can write a really lousy plan, which is what many employers do. And he said, I have one, Gary. He said, I'm now paying an average of 75 an hour to my hygienist. And that's just the reality of, of it today. He's in Orange County, California. So that's just, that's what it takes to hire. hire. So if, if I don't offer that to someone interviewing, they'll go to, to the next interview and, and get that offer from the next office. And uh, he said, I have a plan that's paying $57 total for an adult hygiene visit. That's hygiene exams and x-rays. Naren, uh, you don't need to be a math major to figure out that he's losing money. He's yeah. losing money just on the hourly rate. Yes. He's let not alone. Forget about the rent and uh, all the other expenses. Forget about the, the room. Forget about the equipment. Forget about the materials that are used, the infection control that you go through to make the room a safe environment for your patients. Forget about the admin expense that you're paying uh, an admin team member to, uh, you know, put a button in the seat in hygiene. And he said, I can't, I can't do that anymore. I'm losing money. So he was busy. Um, and we're early in the game with him and he's still busy losing money, but he knows it now. And, and we are uh, developing a very specific strategy to exit that, to, to drop these plans successfully. Uh, because it's it's not viable. Um, he uh, quite literally would be better off uh, financially. He'd be better off not having a hygiene department. And, and that is a disaster, my friends. Uh, those of you that know me know that I am passionate about uh, creating a hygiene-driven practice. And the idea of not having hygiene in your practice would really be um, a, a step in the wrong direction. Not, not only financially for your practice, but for... Um, the betterment of your patients. We know if we see your patients professionally on a regular basis, we accomplish two things. We reduce their, their, well, we keep them as healthy as possible and we reduce their future dental expenses because we're able to identify concerns at the earliest stage. 